Hello and welcome to this online revision session for ACCA FR. My name is Adam. In this uh, video, uh, we will be looking at the September December sample question, which is available on the ACCA uh, practice platform. And the question is the uh, question number one, uh, call it question number uh, 31. And we want to look at the adjustment for uh, so the requirement A here, adjustment for routine earnings as of 30 September X8, and then also uh, preparation of uh, financial position uh, as at 30 September X8. So what I want to do is to quickly uh, look at the spreadsheet. So let me go to the spreadsheet and then uh, draw up my uh, schedule of adjustment quickly. So uh, I'll say requirement A, and always keep it simple. So I'll say uh, schedule of adjustment, schedule of adjustments, to retain ends. for the year so I can just drop it down it's not a problem for the year ended thirtieth September uh, September twenty X eight. So what I'll do is I, I want to reveal fully so I'm in a cell A I want to reveal fully what I've typed, so please watch. So yes, uh, let me drag for it again. Uh, again, yeah, it's showing now. So it's good. Now uh, the next thing I'll do uh, is to look at where I'll place my uh, my figure. But otherwise, if you don't want to drag, uh, you can just. Uh, highlight and then uh, uh, center it to the same uh, effect but I would often go with the uh, stressing it the other side so you can see it so you have enough uh, column or row for the adjustment so I want to put the uh, dollar in the cell uh, B. So please watch what I'm going to do. So I'll put here in the cell B the figures. So uh, it's dollars. So raised to power uh, thousands. And please, you don't need to highlight or uh, try to sort of say. Uh, let me put this here. Let me just click on this again. Uh, put a comma. I just put a comma here. Just put a comma there to reveal exactly. Let me take that again. Dollar comma up there. Three zeros. And that should be fine. So, uh, this is what we have. Uh, have a good view of it. Now it's a cell of adjustment. So the next thing I'll do is to try and build up the recommend B. So I'll leave enough lines. So let's say I can have up to cell number uh, 20. It's not a problem. Uh, and then have the uh, Row number 20, row 20, and have my recommend B here and say uh, statement of financial financial position as at 30th 
September, twenty X eight. So we have the. So I will put also in the sub B. Please watch. Uh, very simple to do. I'll bring it to the zeros, three zeros, and that's enough. You don't need to format it. Now, what I want to do as my building is to say my workers. So uh, my workers can start from, you know, the figure where in the B and C. So I can say D. So I'll just roll up and say, or even in E, just to have enough space, I'll say workers always by the side so i'll say workings and bring bracket and say all figures are in thousands of dollars and close it so i'll always have my workings by the side and again let me just reveal this to show fully so that uh, i can have a good view of it so this is it now, with this, what I want to do next is to read the question. Let me read a question to have a full idea what to do with. Now, London Co. has prepared a draft statement of profit or loss for the year ending September uh, 20x8 before any adjustment required by note one to four below. The draft profit has been added to retain earnings and the summarized prior balance of London co as of 30th September X8. So I have uh, equity shares, I have retained earnings. And what I will do is to use, uh, so I have retained earnings, I have office, building our factories uh, environmental provision current liabilities current asset proceeds from low note deferred tax interest paid suspense account and what i want to do briefly is to use the trial balance to build my pro forward so i'll come here because we are making adjustments so i'll say retain earnings so retained earnings i'm looking at it on the left retain earnings as per question very simple so the figure the figure is four four one two two so i'll put it there and subject to adjustments so i'll have adjustments so i'll have adjustments and then I'll bring color so my adjustments can come beneath that. So for the shadow, I'll leave it and go to my uh, financial position. And for the financial position, I know that I have assets. And under assets, I will need non current assets. And under non current assets, I'll have property. So I have property, uh, plant, and equipment. And because I have uh, office building and factories, I'll say maybe that is my workings. Uh, two, depending on the notes. Uh, let me look at this. Okay, that will be note two. So workings two. So I'll have that in workings two. Then I have a current asset. So let me leave two lines. One, two. On the third line, I'll say current assets. Now for the current assets, uh, there is no uh, figure or there is no note attached. So I can bring that figure here quickly to end easy max. So 14,700 to end easy max. Then I'll go to uh, 
total assets. So uh, total assets. I don't know yet. Then beneath that, I'll have equity and liabilities. Very simple to do. So I'll start with the equity. So equity and under equity, I should have equity shares. So I'll type equity shares. And uh, again, I'm not sure there's any adjustment. So I'll bring the figure as 10,000. That's fine. And under it, I'll bring retained earnings. So the retained earnings, the retained earnings should come from uh, the requirement. So I can just type here uh, requirement A. So put it in bracket because the retained earnings will come from there. I'm building the pro forma, very important for the exam. Now, the next thing I will look at is under the uh, I have environmental provisions, so that should be uh, a non current liability. So I'll say non non current liabilities. So liabilities, very simple, and you need to practice. With practice, you get better and you improve on your chances of passing. So I'll write here under it environmental environmental provision. Uh, it is note number three. So possibly that can be my working three. I'll put it there. And then I have deferred tax. And then defer tax. So uh, let's say defer tax. So deferred tax. I'm taking you through building a very good exam technique. So deferred tax. Let me just scan the note. That's the last note here. So I can say deferred tax can be working for. And then plus any other adjustment I'll need. Then I'll come down. Let's leave two lines and say. Uh, current liabilities and on the face of the trial balance as well the current liabilities is 34,500 no adjustment so I'll type there 34,500 easy so I've drawn up this pro forma now the next thing I'll do is to take the notes one after the other and then see the adjustments required which i will do as my workings so let's take the first note now a five percent low note was issued on first october x7 at its fair uh, face value of five million so you go to the trial balance you would see that the low note look at it proceeds of five percent low note which is five million because the figures are raised into thousands of dollars. So that's the figure here, 5 million. So it was issued at the start of the year because the year end 30th September. So it is at the start of the year. So the next thing you will do is to continue reading. Now, direct cause of the issue amounted to 0 0.125 million and were charged to profit or loss. And this is an error. Because as per the IFRS and nine, this issue costs are to be deducted from the process. So we have to reverse it. Now the low note will be redeemed in five years' time at a substantial premium, which gives an effective interest rate of eight percent. So we we'll use that for the amortization. The annual repayment of uh, two fifty, uh, which is the five million times five percent, are paid on thirty. So it means that the interest paid, which is in the trial balance here, please look at it. The interest paid to fifty thousand. Uh, we have seen that in the north. So uh, I want to quickly go to the uh, workings to start my workings one. So I'll say uh, workings number one. I'll say low notes. So everything on the low notes I'll do in workings.
two. Now, I want to first start with the adjustment for the direct cost. Now, for the issue cost, so let's say issue cost. What I will do is to uh, reverse it. So the issue call we say we debit, so we debit process or loan note. So I'll debit loan notes, and the amount is one two five. So I'll debit is one two five, and then I'll credit. I'll credit profit or loss. So I'll credit profit or loss. But in this adjustment, we are looking at retain any. So I'll say retain. I think that is enough. Uh, I'll put it here. One, two, five. So I'll put one, two, five there. So what I'll do is to quickly go to my face of the PL and bring this figure. So I'll come here and say uh, loan issue costs. They were debited so i'll say equal to then i'll go to my workings and bring it there so it means that i've been able to bring it so the marker when marking will know that the loan issue cost here the adjustment can be found in workings too easy and you must understand as you progress now let's amortize Let's amortize the loan. So I'll build the amortized cost and please watch. So I'll say the amortized cost. So uh, I'll have, uh, let's say, uh, I'll do it here from the cell F. So what I'll do is to say uh, the year. So the year and the year end and watch opening balance so i'll type opening balance the next one will be the finance cost which is the effective interest uh, just to build again the next one would be the interest paid which we are giving and just to build again the last row or column will be the closing balance keep it simple so the year end the year end is uh, 30th September so uh, just short it 20 uh, 20 x8 then i'll go to the open balance now the open balance please watch it should be equal to the five million which is a five thousand minus the uh, debit i have done up here and that should give me a reduced figure and what very simple because we have built up that we will deduct it from the loan note we have to less it so your formula you have built here the marker can click on it and see that you have deducted the issue cost now for the finance cost, it is going to be equal to the opening balance here times the 8%. And remember, it is 12 months, full year. So the 8% is 0 0.08. And you enter. It gives you 390 as the finance cost. Now the interest paid we are given already to be 250. So I'll, I'll type that there. And then I'll go to closing balance which i need for my uh, financial position so what i'll do here please take note it is equal to the opening balance plus the finance cost minus the interest paid i've built up a very good formula so look at it i have five zero uh, five one what will i do i'll take the finance cost to the pnl so quickly i'll say uh, to PNL, uh, let me go up a bit. So I'll say finance cost. Finance cost. Also work is two. 
I'll say equal to, then I'll go down there and bring that figure, 390, this. Now, remember, please watch, the finance cost is a deduction on the face of the adjustment. So I will just reveal it again, which is double clicking it. And after the equal to sign, I'll put minus there and say enter. It has negated it for me. The next thing I'll do as I draw up these workings is to go to the financial position and under the non current liabilities, I'll put here 5% low notes. So 5% low note. And again, it is working too. And I'll go and reference it. So let's go to the workings. Uh, I'm going too far. Just climb quickly up here. And the more you practice this, the better you are at referencing and getting your figures. So equal to this, I'll enter. So you go back and you see that under the non carrying liabilities, you have brought the, the low note. So the point is, you are not waiting to finish all your workings before bringing in these figures into the proforma. It is the reason we have built up the proforma. And we have left spaces in between, just in case we have a new figure who we'll bring it. Very important. So that is about it for note one. We have dealt with all the aspect of note one. Now I go to note two. Let's see note two. It says that London Co acquired an office building for 20 million on 1st October 20X2 with an estimated useful life of uh, 25 years. So let me see the face of the trial balance. Look at it, the office building is 20 million. That's the cost of it. And that's the figure we are giving here. 20 million. Here is it. 20 million. Good. And remember, it was bought on the 1st of October 20X2. So if you're looking at the current year at the start of X7, you have to count the number of years so far. And again, we are giving the accumulated depreciation. So that should not be a problem. So the accumulated depreciation is given here at 1st October X7. So to have the current amount, which will be 20 minus 4, and that will be 16. Now let's move on. Now depreciation is charged on a pro rata basis. Now on 1st April X8, the building was deemed to be impaired as its fair value was uh, estimated to be uh, 12 million. So it means that we have to determine the current amount at this date, which is the 1st of April X8. So from the start of the year, 1st October X7, to 1st April X8, that would be six months. Six months. Because you have October, November, December, and then you have January, February, March. That would be six months. So we have to determine the six month depreciation taken out from the current amount as of 1st October X7 then we can have the current amount as of 1st April X8. Now, it went on to say that at that day, the estimated remaining life was revised to 12 years. Ignore the fair tax on the consequence of this revaluation. Good. So let's deal with the office building. Then we come back and deal with the factory so that we don't miss out. So what I will do is to go to my workings up here and say, workings number workings number two and i'll call it property property uh, you always keep it simple property plant and equipment as your main uh, heavy and then under it i can have the office building so the office building good so what i'll do is to have i'll say cost cost at uh first october 20 x2 and i'll put it in the cell f look at it it is 20 million i'm looking at it i'm looking on the left side here so i'm going to do that quickly 
and it's 20 million so 20 thousand and then i'll say uh, less accumulated so uh, something like that accumulated depreciation and the accumulated depreciation on the face of the trial balance was 4 million here is it this figure 4 million so i'll type here uh, let me get it quickly equal to minus 4 million then i'll say this plus this because i've already negated that so i have a reduced figure and this will give me a carrying amount carrying amount at 1st october 20 x7 and please this require practice it require a lot of practice so what I will do is to find the depreciation. So I'll work the depreciation. So depreciation up to 1st April. So 1st uh, April. 1st April 20x8. And what would that depreciation be? Now we know the cost and we know the current amount. So here is it. It is the twenty thousand. Please watch. Divided by the useful life. Here is it. Twenty five. But because we are looking at from the start of first October twenty x seven to first April twenty x eight, it's six months. So I'll multiply. So I'll time a portion. Six divided by twelve. And that should give me the depreciation. So I'll reveal this again and say, you know what? I will negate it so that it's a deduction. Then I'll have carrying amount. So I can just copy this. Let me just copy. Uh, Control C and then come down here. Control V and paste it. But I'll change it to. I'll change the date. I'll highlight. I'll highlight it and change the date. They say, at first April. Twenty X eight. Very interesting. Now, it is equal to the sixteen, plus the depreciation of six men, and I'll put it here. Now look at it, fifteen six hundred. I'm still building on these workings. The next thing I'll leave a line. Please note the reason why I'm leaving the line is that there was an impairment exercise on this first of April, and we had a fair value of twelve million. So I'll leave a line and say fair value at first April. Yet again, it's about practice, 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 and practice. And the figure was given as 12 million, so 12,000. Now, this figure is less than the current amount. So I'll put here impairment, impairment, very simple, impairment, uh, get it quickly, impairment loss. And then put here the equal to this figure minus this figure and that should give me the loss look at it impairment that's the impairment loss now the next thing i'll do is to find the depreciation so uh let me copy this again control c uh control v then i'll edit it and say uh depreciation up to uh, 30th September 20x8 and this time it is going to be based on a 12,000 so it is a 12,000 so I can just uh, say 12,000 divided by the revised useful life of 12 years so the 25 years is gone if we ignore it now because we are dealing with 12 men I'll say times 
6 divided by 12 and I'll enter again I would have the current amount at the year end because I need that for my PP so I'll say control C and then control V so I'll just quickly edit this again uh, that is a good thing about using a spreadsheet we work very fast so by copying so uh, September and this current amount would be equal to this minus this enter I have a revised current amount of 11500 now what I have here I have enough information to take to the uh, PNL. So I'll say uh, total depreciation. So total depreciation on building. Keep it simple. This should be equal to uh, this first one. Uh, I've negated this, but it should be 500 plus. 400 so what I'll do is to negate this but it's not a problem but just know that you should have 900 so when it is uh, less than that you should know otherwise I would have left this out so just for you to know that I will have not negated this and instead bring the formula here and say uh, 16 minus 400 so take note, it comes with practice. You need to practice to understand the formulas, how it works. So I have a figure that will go to PNL. So I'll quickly go to PNL. Uh quickly go to PNL and say PNL, where are you? So the adjustment here and say uh depreciation. Depreciation on building. Remember it is workings number two. So I'll say it is equal to, and I'll go, you don't type in it. So I'll go down and pick that depreciation of 900 I have here. Should be able to move freely in between. Now I come back to the face of the PNL and say, you know what? This figure should be negative because it is a deduction, it's an expense. So I'll negate it. It comes with practice. I cannot overemphasize this. So the next thing I'll pick is the impairment. So the impairment loss should be deducted. Also, work is two. Uh, this should be EN. So I'll come here and say, you know what? Let's go and pick it from the workings, the impairment. I'm going to pick it quickly, which is this figure here. And say enter now when I go back I'll say again this figure should be negated because it is a loss so I'll put a minus here there you have it now I can now go down to the workings and complete it with the office uh, the factories so I'll say the factories Now, the factory, let's read on that. It says that the uh, London Co. had 10 factories. And on 1st October X7, London Co. sold one of its factories with a carrying amount of 3 million. Now, cost 5 million, accumulated depreciation 2 million for 3.5. Quickly, I know that there will be profit on disposal. Because it had a current amount of 3, they sold it for 3.5. And that would affect my profit information. I do not want to miss this. So quickly, I'll come back to profit and say profit on disposal. And I'll work that here and say it is equal to, so I'm looking at it, it is 3,500 minus 3,000. And you don't need to show a separate workings for this because when you the marker click in it they will know that the profit is three five minus three thousand 
easy. Now, I can go back and build on my workings for the factories. Now, what do I need? We were given that the uh, factories are depreciated 15% per annum. So, no depreciation has yet been uh, accounted for. So, what we'll do is that let's go to the uh, trial balance. I'll pick the factory, the cost, which is here. So, I'll say cost as at 1st October. Uh, 20x7, which is given here. Uh, here is it. It's 40,000. I'll put it here. 40,000. 40,000. Then I'll say less, less accumulated depreciation. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. It's the rule of the game. I'll say equal to 11 100 and now have carrying amount so carrying amount at 1st October 20x7 and that should be equal to uh, this minus this one that should give me the kind amount. Now, on this date, there was a disposal, and as per the IS 16, once an asset is sold, we take out the uh, accumulated depreciation and so forth. But because we have already the current amount, we take out the current amount. So I'll say less factory uh, factory disposed. And that value was uh, three thousand. So, uh, if I want, I can just uh, say equal to negative here, and uh, uh, I'll enter, and then I'll say uh, again, Control C, copy, and Control V, paste. So, sort of an adjusted after the disposal. So this should be equal to this plus this because I've negated it. And that should give me uh you no, know, let me let me look at this again. Uh just just a minute. Let's do it again. Uh let me reduce the zoom a bit. Good, it's better now. Good. So here we are. Uh, it should be equal to this figure plus this. And that should be the adjusted figure 25,900. So what I will do uh, is to bring the depreciation, which is 15% on the reducing balance. So look at it. 15% on the reducing balance. So I'll say depreciation. So depreciation. So I can even just show the uh, depreciation for the year. And that should be equal to, it should be equal to this times 0 0.15. So that should be the uh, the depreciation now led to uh, the nearest thousand. Now, because I have to copy this again, so control C and then control V to paste it, but this time I have to adjust the year end is X8 and it's 30 September. Very simple, and this figure is equal to this minus the depreciation for the year and that is it so what i will do is to say uh total because i need it total uh total pp 
and that total PP should be equal to the current amount we had. So, uh, excuse me, let me pull this up using this arrow up here. The current amount we had from the building, which is here, 11,500. So, plus, shift plus this figure. And that should give us the total figure for the PP. I, I have figures now that I can post to the pro forma. So, I'll pick the depreciation on the uh, factory. So, I'll go to the PNL. So, uh, let's go down to PNL. And say uh, depreciation. On factories also in workings too uh, not a much of a problem so this should be equal to so we go down to our workings and go and pick it very interesting and pick the depreciation here is it now say enter so when I come back what I want to do again to is to just open it up again double click on it and remember that it's an expense i'll negate it there you have it then i'll go to the face of the financial position and say pp here you are it's equal to uh i'll go to the workings again and bring this figure this total figure there you have it so i have my pp here and this is where your own figure principle would give you credit that figure might be wrong maybe due to some uh, errors you did uh, or you made when you were doing the workings but if you're able to carry that figure total onto the face of the uh, performer you get credit for this figure so it might be wrong so you keep working keep working and move on don't worry so much whether the figure is correct or it is incorrect just post it to the relevant what uh, place and you are moving on so uh, this should be enough for the uh, note 2. So I'll move on to note 3 and see what is there. Now it says that Lanico has an obligation to clean up environmental damage caused at one of its factories site during Excel. The cleanup is due to take place at the end of the factory's useful life. Now the liability has been accounted for appropriately and the balance at 1st October Excel represents the current present value at that date. So there is no problem here and the cost of capital is 5%. So it means that we only need to find the interest cost on this provision. So look at it, the provision balance at, as at this date was 1228. So I'll go and build a working here. So I'm going to reveal my workings again and say, uh, you know what, working straight. So working straight, my uh, environmental environmental provision. You need to always label your workings so the marker can easily what uh, locate it for you. So the first now though is to find the unwinding cost, the unwinding interest. And the unwinding interest should be equal to the figure we have on the face of the uh, trial balance one two two eight times the discount uh, the cost of capital five percent and here is it look at it five percent so five percent is zero point zero five and it's the full year so no time apportionment and that should be equal to so to the nearest thousand so uh, what I'll do is to run it up uh, to the nearest thousand uh, so let me see uh, okay so this is uh, the nearest thousand we'll give me 61 so the provision, so I'll say provision at 30th 
September, which is the year end. 20x8. So what I'll do here, then please look at it. It should be equal to the 1228 plus the unwinding interest. And that should give me a total. Again, I need to run this up to uh, the nearest thousand. So I'll click this one. It run it up to the nearest thousand. Now, I have figures I can use now for my uh, PNL and the financial position. Remember, this will go to PNL. The unwanted interest will go to PNL. So let's go to PNL. PNL, where are you? Yes, here is it. So unwinding, just keep it simple. You don't need to go and add it to finance course. So unwinding interest. So keep working as you go. Keep working. And this is workings number three. Workings number three. And I'll say it is equal to, don't type the figure. Always cross-reference the workings. So I'll go down quickly and pick it. Uh, scroll down scroll down scroll down and here is it i'm picking it i'll say enter remember that this is an expense so i have to negate it so i'll say minus i'll enter and yet again i have to run this up to the nearest uh, thousand so i'll run it up to the nearest thousand there you have it then i'll go to the current liabilities because I already have the provision here, I'll say equal to, equal to, then I'll go to the workings. And here is it. I'm going to pick it. And there you have it. Again, you just have to run it up to the nearest thousand. Very simple to do that. It's not a problem that you have a, a comma here and the rest of the figures are without a comma for the thousand places. It is not a problem. They are not going to mark commas for you. Your figures are what are going to be marked. Remember that. So make sure you keep the use of the spreadsheet basic. Keep it simple and use the formulas. Cross-reference to all your workings. Now, the last note we have is deferred tax. And it says that at 30 September X8, the tax written down value of property, plant, and equipment was 25 million. The income tax rate applicable to London Co is 25%. And when we have tax written down value, that is the tax base. So it means that this question, we have to find the temporal difference ourselves. Because we already know the total value for PP, which was 3, 3 something. So we'll pick that value compared to the tax base, and then we can find the temporal difference. So what we do is to go and build uh, workings. Let's go to the workings. So I will say workings number four. So workings number four. And I'll say deferred deferred tax. So deferred tax. What I will do is to say uh, the balance going forward. Uh, I'll pick it from the trial balance. Uh, here is it down here. I'll pick it from here. Which is one five. I'll put it here. One five hundred. And then I'll leave uh, uh, two lines. Yes. And say, okay, three lines and say balance uh, carry forward, which is the closing balance. And what I will need is to work the temporary difference. So let me work the temporary difference. So believe that I'll say temporary. temporal difference so a temporal difference would be the carrying amount so I'll say carrying amount of PPE and I can easily go to the face of the financial position and go and pick that here is it. I'll go and pick it from here. Because that's the total figure. I'll enter. Then go back. 
or I can even as well pick it from here. So it's not a problem. So, uh, okay, I think it didn't pick it from there. So let me pick it from here. Yeah, that should be fine. Then I'll say, compared to tax base, so I'll say less the tax base, which is the tax written the amount we're giving in note 4 as 25 million. So I'll say uh, 25,000. So therefore, the difference should be this minus this. And that's the temporary difference. So what I will need here for the effect tax closing balance, it should be equal to the temporary difference times the tax rate of 20%, that's 0 0.2, and I will enter. So look at it. The closing balance, the opening balance, the difference will be an increase. So we say increase in the fair tax. And that should go to PNL. So I'll bring it here and say uh, this, this minus this. That's the increase. 203. So I'll quickly, I have the closing balance to the financial position, the increase to PNL. Let me put that quickly to the face of. So, okay, I have it here. The deferred tax. Uh, I should say it's equal to. Uh, should be the closing balance I have here. This one. Enter. And there you have it. Then I'll go to PL and say uh, deferred deferred tax increase. And that was working for and I'll say it's equal to. So I'll go down and pick the 203 down here. Yeah, here is it. And enter. And when I go back, I'll negate it and say enter. There you have it. So I've been able to go to the note one after the other, so you don't miss them. And that is a good exam technique to have. Now, just to have a second look at the uh, trial balance to see if I've picked everything, yes, except for the suspense account, which is in note, uh, note two, and that is the, the disposal. And that suspense account have to be removed. And the adjusting entry to do uh, let me see if I can do that for you quickly. The adjusting entry to do here. Uh, okay, let me just uh, pull these uh, here to say we got a suspense credit debit. So I'll say debit suspense. So debit suspense. I'll type in that debit uh, suspense you might not really have to do this anyway debit suspense three five hundred credit see what we are going to credit we are going to credit the factory which was disposed with a current amount of three thousand and we we'll credit profit or loss with a gain so profit or loss with a gain of 500. So your adjusting entries will reconcile there. So that is given there, uh, and that should be fine. So you can just look at how uh, this will show here, uh, just to go back. There you have it. So when they double click in it, to reveal what exactly you have typed in. You might not really have to do this anyway. So uh, based on what we have done, what I will do is to quickly total my adjusted retained earnings uh, on the basis that this is all I have done. I will use auto sum and what? I'll type sum 
and then open bracket and now click on the retain earnings aspect question and drag it down to the last figure and say enter and it means that i've made a loss so i'll say uh retained retained loss so here i will just run it up to uh, the nearest thousand so that is nine two uh, four two nine two i'll i need to turn it to the face of the financial position so i'll say here is equal to i'll go up and say it's equal to this and enter it now again i need to just convert this to the nearest uh, thousand and that should be fine then uh i have done all the details for my uh statement of financial position i can leave this and move to the next question you don't need to have the total assets and you don't need to have the total for the bottom here and in most cases under the exam circumstance you are likely not to have the total balance so you don't need to bother you don't need to worry about this so much but i have some the pnl or the adjusted retain earnings because i needed to what bring it down to the financial position but for your sake just to uh ensure because this is a teaching session uh i'll just have to sum this up and say this is equal to this plus this one and enter and i'll go down here and say uh equal to this time i need auto sum so i'll type some open bracket it should start from the equity shares and i'll drag it down to the last item i'll enter so here it is uh, balanced so we have 48 215 but please you don't need to total it in the exam <laughs> about 99 percent of the time that is that you won't get it right so don't bother and often in the marking grade or the marking scheme uh, they are often not marks for the totals but it is the entries you have made which will score so this is what you need to do uh, look at it let me just uh, open it full screen so you can see it well before i sign out so this is what we have done so this is the p, p uh, the retain earnings adjustment look at it carefully we have made a loss and then when you go into the financial position this is what we have done look at it look at it and then for the workings we have started from workings one look at what we have done nicely workings two workings three and workings four which is the defectors great so i hope this helps in your preparation for the fr exam thank you for joining and see you again